and welcome to Business Edition. In this program, we'll be focusing on the reinforcement power distribution project, which is being undertaken by Tonesco under the support of the Japanese government. It is hoped that through this project, Dar es Salaam will become much brighter with improved quality and reliable power. In the Entrepreneur today, we feature Dilip Kanaba. He's the chairman of TILR Eclectic. My name is Yvonne Msemembo saying welcome to Business Edition. So with me right now is Mr. Kazuyoshi Matsunaga. He's the uh, Minister and Deputy Chief of Mission uh, in Tanzania, the Japanese Embassy. Yes. Uh, welcome. So we understand that uh, the Japanese government is supporting Tanzania in the era of uh, power generation, mm -hmm. improving um, power in the country. Yeah. And in particular right now, the, um, Tanesco is undertaking a project in the improvement of the quality of uh, power in Dar es Salaam. Mm -hmm. um, what is um, the Japanese uh, role in this? Okay. So, the first of all, I really appreciate uh, Tatesco uh, selected this, uh, the consortium of the Japanese company. And it will help not only to, uh, to provide the stable uh, electricity uh, in this country, but also it will give the opportunity more Japanese company uh, to come to uh, this uh, country. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Tanzania government and also the Japanese government uh, share the common uh, view, uh, not only uh, the official development aid, but also the having more Japanese companies uh, to this uh, market and also the investment uh, from the Japanese companies are very, very essential. And so, uh, not just uh, the, this consortium of the, of the Japanese company, uh, yeah, will uh, provide uh, just only the hardware, but also uh, the, uh, to uh, help to uh, realize the safety and security of this country. And uh, in order to have more uh, foreign company uh, coming to this uh, Tanzania, that kind of uh, safety and security is very, very essential. And so uh, the, uh, the, the Japanese uh, government and the Japanese company uh, get together uh, to help uh, the uh, safety and uh, security of this country, not only by uh, helping uh, in this uh, energy uh, electricity sector, but also in other uh, area, energy or uh, the road or infrastructure and agriculture and also education in the broad area. So uh, we would like to cement uh, our bilateral relationship uh, to help uh, to assist more uh, development of this country. And uh, when we look at, uh, we focus on energy uh, yeah. in the country, um, which particular companies are playing a major role from Japan in this area? And what are they doing? There are many, many Japanese companies uh, now uh, involved uh, in this uh, yeah, sector. And not only the, the big name, but also the other uh, smaller uh, the company uh, yeah, can do yeah, something. And especially uh, Japanese company has some advantage in terms of the technology. But also uh, through this project, uh, it will accelerate the people-to-people uh, -people exchange. So it can transfer uh, not only the technology, but also the worth ethics and also the, uh, advan uh, the characteristic of the, the Japanese citizen, uh, such as the punctuality and also the discipline. And uh, those kind of uh, uh, the characteristic uh, can be uh, yeah, shared uh, in the uh, Tanzanian uh, the citizen. That will also uh, help to uh, make a better uh, business environment uh, to have more uh, the, the company uh, coming to Tanzania. Um, you said that uh, you'd like to see um, such a project like this bring about more economic development. Uh, maybe um, you can elaborate a little bit more. What do you want to see happening from such a project like this? Uh, our uh, assistant uh, in the past uh, focused more on the uh, hardware, our infrastructure. But uh, in order to uh, develop uh, this uh, the country economically, uh, would uh, expect to uh, have more uh, software uh, yeah, side uh, very, very important. Uh, that means uh, in order to have a better environment, uh, business environment, for example, uh, yeah, if we procure something uh, from outside, uh, that uh, the material uh, should be arrived in time. 
but uh, that kind of a uh, uh, business environment cannot be only achieved uh, with the hardware but the software is very, very important. Especially the institutional memory, uh, also very important uh, to provide a better uh, software service. Uh, uh, since I came uh, here uh, in the uh, year 2012, I felt uh, this kind of uh, institutional memory uh, should be uh, more shared among uh, uh, many uh, institutions. I, I, th I see that there are many, many talented uh, Tanzanian people. And so it, it, some people had a very uh, a good business mind. But um, uh, that kind of um, uh, that, uh, the single person uh, with the talent uh, can achieve uh, in a very uh, certain uh, limited uh, area. But if you uh, have a team spirit or institutional memory, uh, yeah, you can create more variable things uh, uh, compared to the uh, effort of the individual. So I think uh, the Japanese uh, government and the Japanese uh, company uh, get together. Uh, uh, they provide the, not only that uh, hardware, uh, but also uh, provide such kind of a, a software uh, the, the how we can uh, coordinate uh, the, this kind of big project uh, with um, uh, the teamwork or institutional memory. That uh, can be applied to not only the uh, economic section but also to the other uh, area. Uh, so uh, I, I think uh, this project can be a very good start. Uh, to look for the, the better uh, opportunity which can be applied to the other area. Okay. Welcome back to Business Edition and now with me I have Onishi Yanusori. He's the Chief Representative of JICAM. Welcome to the program. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. I'd like to hear more of the technicalities uh, involved in this project. What does this entail? Um, first, firstly, uh, maybe uh, all Tanzanians agree about the necessity of improving the power situation in this country. As you know, uh, electrification ratio of this country is uh, only a 20 some, some 20 some percent. It is very low, low compared to the other countries. And also you face an uh, unreliable supply of electricity. So there are many, many challenges for improving the power sector. In this context, context, context uh, Japan, uh, has given up uh, top priority to support supporting the power, uh, power sector. This uh, this project covers a uh, uh, major city of Dar es Salaam um, for improving the power supply, uh, reliable power supply. Uh, as I mentioned in the press conference, uh, the uh, uh, share of the power supply in this country, uh, in Dar es Salaam, cover about 50%. 50% of the uh, uh, consu uh, consuming uh, volume of the power in this country. That means uh, uh, this, this project will greatly contribute to the uh, uh, reliable power supply in this country, especially for the, uh, giving the good, good supply of power to the industrial sector and to many people living in Dar es Salaam. So, I uh, uh, would like to understand just a little bit more about this project. What is Tanesco going to be doing and what is, um, you know, JICA as in this project going to be doing? We are responsible for everything for uh, power sector, our electricity power, uh, power supply to this country. Uh, we are, we are um, but uh, due to the, some uh, challenges or bottlenecks uh, faced by the Tanesco and the government of Tanzania, uh, we, we, are, we are supporting several things. For this project, in, in, roughly speaking, we support the budget. budget. Uh, this is the first, first thing. And the uh, second thing is, uh, uh, during the implementation of the project, uh, Japanese consultant, consul, consultant and, uh, contractors are uh, engaged in uh, constructing the uh, uh, substations or other, other things. Uh, with uh, Japanese uh, workmanship. It may also, uh, I think, uh, uh, contribute to the impro improving the Tanesco's people, the working attitude or uh, working uh, experiences. 
Yeah. And in terms of making Dar es Salaam brighter, uh, you're optimistic that that is the goal of this project. Yes. We're going to attain it. It is possible mm -hmm. for only this project to contribute. Uh, com, uh, com, uh, how many How many percent? Yes. Oh, we need to calculate uh, precisely. But um, anyway, I can say uh, this project con uh, greatly contribute to the power situation in Dar es Salaam. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, Japan has given a uh, 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 priority uh, to uh, power sector. So not only uh, providing this uh, grand aid project to uh, Tanesco and Tanzanian people, we are also doing other things. Mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, we are now uh, supporting, updating the power system master plan of this country, which will draw the new uh, power system of this country, which uh, these bright future of the Tandai people ah, all over the country. Yeah. So with me right now is the Managing Director of TUNESCO, Engineer Felchesmi Mramba. Uh, welcome to the program. Um, TUNESCO, under the support of the Japanese government, is undertaking the uh, project for reinforcement of power distribution in Dar es Salaam. It is hoped that through this project we'll see a much brighter Dar es Salaam, we'll see the end of blackouts, you know, unreliable power supply in Dar es Salaam. So if um, you could just start off by telling us how is this project going to be undertaken, particularly with, uh, under TUNESCO, the TUNESCO side? Uh, thank you. It's, it's quite true that we expect to see a brighter Dar es Salaam and more reliable, uh, more quality uh, out of the power we are supplying to citizens in Dar es Salaam. Uh, the way TANESCO is uh, going to undertake this project, first of all, we have formed a project team. Uh, the project team is under a project manager who is going to uh, be working very closely with the consultant and the contractor uh, to make sure that uh, everything we have agreed in the implementation contract of this project is going to be done as per that agreement. So we have a very good structure, a very robust structure, which will assure, uh, will assure us that the project will be completed in time and the expected qualities of this project are going to be achieved. How much funds have gone into this project and what is the time frame of this project? Uh, the funds um, allocated for this project is around uh, $38 million, uh, equivalent to 4.41 billion Japanese yen. And uh, it's a project which is going to start in February 2015 to June 2017. Uh, we've seen quite a number of other projects, you know, that are geared to making sure that uh, Power supply in Dar es Salaam, or not just Dar es Salaam, but uh, Tanzania as a whole, is improved. What's so different about this project? Uh, one particular thing about this project is that it is uh, centered to an area with a very high population density. Because we are talking of a project which is going to deal with issues at the city center and uh, other issues of very high economic importance to the country. Uh, when you talk of city center, you are talking of a place where most of the government revenues are earned. But also when you talk of areas like Jangwani Beach, uh, all that area along the, uh, very close to the hotels along the northern beach, uh, you talk of um, uh, tourist hotels along that area, and the impact of uh, power supply in these areas will have direct implication to the economy, but we also have direct implication to the uh, image of the country, especially when it comes to the foreigners. Uh, you've talked about the areas of Jangwani Beach, but what other areas have you identified that will be um, uh, identified for this project as well to see that there's more quality um, or reliable electricity in those areas? Which are the areas? Yeah, um, there are other areas which are also going to benefit from this project. And as I explained earlier, uh, we expect a line to come from Ubungo, uh, uh, which is the terminal point of the lines from Terra, Kidatu, and all these uh, other upcountry power stations. And f so from Ubungo, a line will go to Ilala. And from Ilala, you know, we are also constructing an underground cable of 132 kilovolts to the city center. Uh, from there, we are uh, doing another substation at uh, Muhimbili Hospital. 
and um, you know the importance of Muhimbili National Hospital to the country as a major uh, hospital in the country, but also um, the university, the, the health and the allied sciences hospital, Muhimbili. And uh, around, the, around the same area, uh, you can see there is a lot of uh, real estate development in Upanga area. So these are the areas which are going to benefit from the first uh, portion of this investment which is substation at Mwimbili. Uh, we are also going to have another substation at Mwananyamala. Uh, to me, Mwananyamala is very important because it's one of the areas which are very fast growing within the city. And so if we can uh, assure that the area around Mwananyamala, Mwananyamala itself and other areas around Mwananyamala, meaning Kinondoni, uh, Mwananyamala itself, and then uh, probably uh, all other areas around, if we will assure those people of reliable power, we can as well stimulate investment and development, construction and other areas of, of, of the economies in that area. And then we are talking of uh, Oster Bay, uh, because there is another substation which they are going to expand uh, at Oster Bay, as well as uh, constructing a new line going to Oster Bay. Now, you look at what is happening in Oster Bay now. We used it to know Oster Bay as a residential area. But what is happening in Oster Bay, the kind of um, constructions happening in Oster Bay, uh, it has completely changed Oster Bay from being a residential area into probably being a commercial area. Because you, 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 you see a lot of restaurants, you see a lot of uh, residential flats, uh, you see a lot of uh, supermarkets and, and other shopping uh, shopping centers coming up in Oster Bay. So uh, if two years back we were supplying uh, say 20 megawatts in Oster Bay, now we need to have 100 megawatts in the same area. So any upgrade of the existing system in Oster Bay will bring a lot of relief to the, uh, to the people living in the area and to the, to the businesses opening up in that area. And we find what are the challenges that you foresee in undertaking this project and how are you going about addressing these challenges? Um, the, the, the first challenge is the interruptions we are expecting to customers because uh, constructing a project of this size and especially when you construct a project in such a way that you also interfere with the existing systems, uh, you, from day one you expect uh, to interrupt with the power supply. So we will have uh, some interruptions uh, that we should forewarn the, the, our customers. But what we are trying to do is to plan properly right from the beginning so that these interruptions will be properly communicated to the customers for them to plan ahead of time. And also uh, we'll make sure that whenever uh, and whenever we can minimize the number of those interruptions, we'll do so. On the other hand, we also expect challenges uh, to do with where you live. You see, one thing with the Dar Islam, we have many areas uh, where people are living, but those areas are not surveyed. And uh, 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 distribution projects or power projects uh, to do with passing a transmission line or a distribution line uh, in a land. So if you are doing that on a land, what will happen uh, some people may claim that this land belongs to me, this land is not, uh, it's not an open land, this is not a uh, road corridor, it's my land. Uh, we may expect uh, such events to happen as we implement the project. Uh, but let me assure you that we have tried our best to survey all the areas and make sure we, uh, we demarcate the areas where the lines will, will pass and uh, from the beginning assure ourselves that we don't have uh, issues to do with the land. They may uh, evolve as we start implementing the project, but uh, we, are, we are prepared to deal with them as they arise. Welcome back to Business Edition. And now with me, I have the chairman of TLR Eclectic, Mr. Dilip Kanaba. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's start off before we talk about this change of name from the living room to TLR Eclectic. 
when you started this business, what led you into the furniture industry? In uh, early 1992, I had uh, built a nice house and uh, I needed good furniture. I, I went around Dar Slam, all the shops. I could not find even one piece of furniture that would suit m my needs. So I had to import, and that's the way how I started to do this business. When you said uh, you had to import, but when we s talk about how you set up, where did you first set up your first, uh, first furniture shop, shall we say? Well, this is the location where I started my business. First I rented it, now I own it. So it has been a very successful business. And uh, my assessment to see that the kind of furniture I would need, I would also think that uh, there are a lot of people in town also would be striving to get the same type of furniture. So when I introduced this thing, it was fantastic. And uh, people love the furniture and uh, it's been expanding since then. Okay, I'd be curious to know, like, you know, we've seen quite a number of um, companies that are coming up in this uh, furniture business right now in Tanzania. But for someone who's thinking about um, starting a furniture business, when it comes to importing products, how do you know what's good and, you know, w how to decide that when I get this furniture, I know I'm going to get a market for it? How do you go about it? It's not very easy to say that uh, this is good or bad, mm. but uh, you have to know what kind of raw material they use inside, uh, so whether it is fire retardant, whether it is uh, environment friendly, are they using proper wood in the sofa or not, you know? Suppose if it is office furniture, mm -hmm. then uh, they have to use E1 grade board, non hazardous to health, environment friendly. Mm -hmm. So basically, there's a lot to learn about uh, furniture than just you can't just go and buy furniture and sell, it's not that easy. You started off as the living room, but now you've changed names to TLR Eclectic. Why and why this name TLR Eclectic? Uh, there was a research done behind this mm -hmm. and uh, TLR Eclectic means uh, unique furniture to suit your needs. And we have got a lot of brands in TLR Eclectic. Mm -hmm. We've got TLR Boutique, mm -hmm. which is like Ashley Furniture of America, home furniture. Then we got uh, TLR Office. Then we, we have TLR Go that we sell uh, ready to assemble furniture in supermarkets. Mm -hmm. And then we also have TLR Joinery. Mm -hmm. So we manufacture furniture out of hardwood as well. So under TLR Eclectic, we have got sub brands as well. So that's the reason we change. The name, The Living Room Limited, looks like home furniture, mm -hmm. but we do a lot more than that. So we needed a better brand to represent the kind of business we, uh, that we are doing. Um, how do you see the, uh, the competition? You were the early starters in this industry, right? But now that, you know, with the other companies coming into this industry, how do you see this competition? Well, competition is healthy. We love great products like us, mm -hmm. great prizes. Mm -hmm immediate delivery so that uh, makes a customer happy and uh, uh, com uh, competition becomes uh, better so if you're good people will buy from you and do you see yourself as th the best <laughs> well we, are, we want to be the best we want to give unparalleled service to our clients mm. that is our aim mm. uh, let's look at the kind of uh, Customers that you deal with right now in in the country, who who do you who do you target, or just is the home, the office? Who are your main clients here right now? Uh, we are doing both equally good. Mm -hmm. We have got great uh, ho home furniture, so we got uh, a lot of customers for home furniture, and we do a lot of office furniture. So we have a lot of corporate customers, government customers, uh, CEOs. MDs or companies, so basically we got uh, from the medium segment to high segment uh, market. What kind of challenges do you face though? The kind of challenges that we face is we need uh, professional uh, merchandising manager, we need uh, professional salespeople, we need uh, uh, 
machine operators. And can't you get them here? Uh, we are continuously training local Tanzanians and uh, I think TLR will produce uh, good leaders and uh, that will keep us above the edge. Importing furniture um, is not just all that you do, I understand, that you also do um, interior designing. How do you go about doing this? Well, we have in-house interior designer. Mm -hmm. We also outsource uh, interior designers. We also have uh, our branded companies that we import the furniture. They do the designing for us. So we can do any interior designing to anybody's requirement. For, so for somebody who's thinking of um, entering into business like what you've been doing for the past 20 years or so, uh, what are the key things that you would advise them to make sure that they stay on top of that business? You need professional people, you need professional administration staff, you need professionalism in all the segments of the business. Okay. And uh, like us, we focus on quality. So, you know, th uh, that's the way how customers are very happy and they always come back to us. And what keeps you going in this business? that every day you want to wake up and go into the office and say, this is what I like doing, what keeps you going? Well, I've got a very good team whom I like to work with and uh, we enjoy as a family and uh, they enjoy working and I, I also enjoy working. This is my passion. Well, that's it from me, Ivo Anam Samembo. Until next week, same time, it's goodbye from Business Edition.